hey, hey. Coming live for our energy focus for the week. Come on in and join me. As we set up, here we am, Facebook and Instagram. Come on in and join me for a few minutes as we talk about what's going on in the cosmos and we align our energy together. Come on in and join me. Terry Ann Hyman here. This is part of my live stream from my Empowered Spirit podcast, my Empowered Spirit show, the Sunday Night Energy Focus. So I just came back from the Fearless Fest. What an awesome weekend. Really huge shout out to Annie and Emily and all the work they did, and especially our community for all those that joined in. What a great thing. What a really great weekend. I love being there, aligning the energy, playing the bowls, and really opening up my heart with my life and the work that I do. So thank you everyone for joining us there. I feel so good to be a part of a community. A really big shout out. Seeing people I haven't seen in a year, reconnecting. Actually met a new astrologer. Yay, Mandy Ray. Yes, very excited. We had great conversations. Going to have to have her on as a guest on the Empowered Spirit Show. Evolutionary astrology. The imprints, the incarnations that we come in with and how astrology shows us that. Very excited. Definitely ties in to the Akashic reading and the work that I do with that and the imprints that we carry and how we can open up and make shifts in our lives by knowing these things. Definitely. So I'm going to share this out. If you're able to, do a share for me as well. I don't quite see it yet coming in on Facebook. I do see I am on Instagram. All right, I'm sharing on both places. Let's see, a little refresh here. Hit the share button. So this week, we're going to talk about moving into the last phase of the moon cycle. We had all that big old full moon come in last week. And so now what? What is it that we do with that energy? And how can we open up to this cycle of where we are right now and really work with the cosmic forces to help us do that. I love it. Mandy and I really got along. We talked about this energy and how we can open up. Very excited. So I'm going to share in the group. If you're not in my Empowered Spirit Circle group, please come join us. As we move through into spring, I've got some fun things I'm going to be doing only in the group, working on Akashic clearings, raising the vibrations, releasing that excess energy so that you can open up to manifest your life. Very excited to be sharing that. We'll only be sharing it in the group, so please join. Bring your friends, whoever you know, somebody that may be also inspired to open up to their spirituality. All right, I have shared to all the places I share on the group and the Facebook page, all of that stuff, and here I am on Instagram. So how are you doing? Question always ask. How are you doing? How are you doing energetically? How are you doing emotionally? All right, these are the things we began to look at, all right, as we moved through this last phase. We had all that radiance of the light of the moon come in, and now we start to release. This is that waning phase where we start to release out. What happens? Things get in our way, our doubts, our fear, our limited beliefs on setting us in our course. And so we want to release out that excess energy to help us be grounded so that we can be productive, right? New moons are intentions. That's coming. But as we work through the full moon, that's like putting it into the physical plane. All right, we just moved into the energy of Pisces and the sun sign, all right? And so that Pisces energy is really inspiring us to open up to our spirituality, to our intuition, to really go a little deeper into our soul, all right? And we also will see that the new moon coming up will be in Pisces, sun and moon in Pisces, which is really helping us to do our dream work, helping us to open up to those visions that we want. We've all done a little shift with our purpose in life. So how do we open up and catch up with that? So that's one of the energy is that's coming in for us as we move through. We're finishing out February. We're moving into March. All right. We're moving in closer and closer to the energy of spring, which is planting those seeds. So you do have a little bit of time this last week or two as you bring in this Pisces energy to open up to your dreams, to continue that winter energy of what is it you're trying to vision, what is it you're trying to see, and what are those dreams that you want to bring forward. So really the best thing to do this week is to start clearing out the clutter, clearing out the paper, clearing out the mind, clearing out the emotions, all of that stuff that gets in your way. Because this next new moon coming in, another week or so, 
is about seven days, 10 days, something like that. Wednesday, week from Wednesday. So 10 days is going to be a really big one on setting intentions. But if you're bogged down, if you've got a lot going on, you're not going to be able to clearly set those intentions for you. And this one's about dreaming big. Your wildest imagination, put it out there, go for it. All right. But to do that this week, we're really going to focus on trust, surrender. Pisces energy reminds us of that. I know I've been tapping a little bit on resistance to fear. And if I turn that around, that's go with the flow, be in the energy, let go of control. And Pisces reminds us to do that. How many of us want to control, 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 right? That's where fear can come in because we have to let go of some of that control in order to go with the flow in order to make new changes in our lives. How many of us want to make some new changes, right? We set up intentions. We want to do it. I raised my hand. Did you catch that? Maybe you're in the same place too. And sometimes when we do that, we have to step out of our comfort zone. We have to stand on our edge a little bit and let go of some of that fear, which may feel uncomfortable, but that's how we grow, right? That's how we learn our lessons and that's how we take a chance. So it definitely is a good time right now to finish out that winter energy as this Pisces energy comes in. Work with your intuition. If you aren't trained in intuition, know that you can train this. This week on the podcast, I shared about the difference between being empathic and intuitive. Many of us think, oh, I'm empathic, so I'm intuitive. But if we don't train it, we open ourselves up to lots of excess energy. All right, so the podcast really kind of talks about the differences, how they overlap, and how you actually can begin to understand a little bit more about whether or not you can create the boundaries, create that awareness for you, right? We can be empathic, doesn't mean we're also intuitive. We can be intuitive, doesn't mean we're also empathic, but you can share a common field of energy with that. But when you work with the boundaries and train it, these become your superpowers. Instead of being a victim to all that excess energy, know your boundaries. Know when you're picking up excess energy. Then you can move that out of the way and start to train some of those other clairs, the seeing, the hearing, the knowing. And that's what's really important. So definitely check out that podcast. Really in alignment with this Pisces energy, you may notice that you may be Maybe it's time that you have gone deeper into your spiritual practice. Maybe you're opening up to meditation now. Maybe you've been to yoga, right? That's what this weekend was about for so many of us. Try something new. Do something different. Self-care. Taking time for yourself is really important. So it really is. And as we move through this last phase, we always go into the dark of the moon, which will be towards the end of the week, towards Sunday, Monday. We'll talk a little bit about this next week. Actually, I may not be live next week. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit about that because that dark light, that darkness of the moon takes away the light so we have to be careful of getting too deep and too much letting go and bringing into that shadow side but we do want to work with letting go of the energy of the excess energy that you've accumulated with the full moon of whatever it is that gets in your way of building your practice of building your purpose of taking those passionate steps forward one by one I know many times you think we want to just get there all right so this helps us to really kind of one step at a time and make it be a passionate step one step at a time all right so that's really kind of the energy that we're working with and all this pisces energy again just notice am i taking on too much energy am i opening up myself to more than i can handle or am i ready for a deeper practice can i sit a little longer this next week as the light of the moon kind of releases out and opens me up to a darker part or deeper part of who i am can you let go of the old patterns all right imprints We tend to have imprints as we come around, all right? And we need to let those go too, all right? And that's how we move out and open up to the new work that we are. Working and what isn't working for you. That's really what is important, all right? Can you answer that question? Do you know? And these are some of the questions that we need to ask. Looks like I got a little trouble on Facebook. Hold on, here we go. Hope you're there. Thelma, let me know if you can see me. All right, a little shut off. All right. Hey, Sen, how are you? Just a little check-in. I kind of lost my thought midstream. I had everything kind of technically let go. But what I was saying is knowing what it is that is working and what isn't working. All right? And letting go of what isn't so that you can open up to the energy that is working for you. And that is really where we are this week. That's where we are in the cycle, finishing out this last phase, moving us into the March energy, really more intensely into that Pisces energy. So as we move through, Monday is going to be kind of a slow day. We're going to get started. Productive days are really more Tuesday. Wednesday, our energy is going to be high. Thursday and Friday, we're going to feel a little bit more serious with the phases of the moon coming in. And then as we open up and come into the dark of the moon, that's where we really need to work to keep our vibrations open and really moving forward. 
Really important that you open up to this energy, become aware, and notice. A couple of the stones that are recommended for this time, this Pisces energy, one of the ones I love to work with is Labradorite. All right, Labradorite is a really good one for me right now. I've got a new phase in my life opening up. I want to be able to catch the flashes. That's what Labradorite does, to have that new direction, all right, to bring in. It's almost like a magic stone. I mean, some people call it helps us that way because we can start to transform our dreams into the physical plane. Really important. And then we have amethyst. We all know amethyst is good. It's great for Pisces energy. It's great for spirituality. Helps open up the crown, which helps us to access those dreams. So I think the two of them are really good together. You can wear them. You can carry them. You can put them on your desk. But really great stones to use as we move through this time. And I have to admit, I have not used this labradorite in a while, but there's this beautiful flash of energy. So I love it for new directions. And that's exactly where I am. Maybe you're there too. Maybe it's time to create that new direction for your own life right now. So these are the ways that the stones can help you as we move into this week. All right? Really a good time to clean out. I know for me, clean out the papers, clean out the energy, clean out the emotions, clean out the mind, release that energy. So as we move into that new moon and move right into spring, you can open up and set those new intentions for you. So I think tonight for the meditation, we'll take a moment or two and ground our energy, come into the heart, notice what excess energy is there as we open up to this time. So if you can, take a nice deep inhale, and let's just do that together. Energetically connect and exhale away, lighting some sage here, inhaling and exhaling, bringing that breath all the way back down deep into the earth. As we just take this moment, pulling your energy in, maybe it's been scattered all over the place from the weekend, pulling your energy in so you can focus for this week ahead, becoming present, inhaling and exhaling, opening up to the vibrations, opening up to that third eye center, inhaling and exhaling, feeling that breath opening up, and exhale, pulling it back down deep into the earth. Feel yourself grounding with Mother Earth. As we just take this moment, noticing where we are right here, this last phase of the moon, this last part of winter. In the medicine wheel, we sit in the direction of the north, where we bring in our dreams and our visions, where we open up to the wisdom of our elders, to all those that have come before us pulling it into our spirit, into our soul. So we anchor in these directions for guidance and protection to the north, the east, the south, and the west, above us, below us, right into the very center, opening up, pulling in your higher guidance, feeling that connection deep within your spirit, deep within your soul. As you allow yourself to set an intention for this week to be in alignment with the cosmic forces, inhaling, and exhaling, bringing the awareness right into the heart, just dropping into the heart as you take a moment and notice where you are. Notice the emotions that come in as you open the heart, releasing out anything less than light, releasing out the lower vibrations of fear, overwhelm, anxiety. The heart helps us to center. The heart is a love vibration which raises that energy as you release out the excess energy. Inhaling and exhaling, releasing out. And allow yourself to feel the feet on the floor, grounding this energy. This will help pull in all the scattered energy, pull back. Feel the alignment coming in for you. Release the anxiety, sometimes Sunday brings, Sunday evening. And feel yourself just grounding with Mother Earth. Inhaling and exhaling, pulling that awareness in, opening the heart, finding that peace, that joy, and that love within you. Inhaling and exhaling. So you start to bring the awareness back, centering the energy as we go to look for the guidance of the cards. 
So the questions that kind of come forward, I kind of pose when I went to draw the cards was how can we best serve ourselves by looking at this last phase of the moon and what kind of, what kind of guidance can we ask the cards for? Drawing from the wild unknown, if you didn't choose a card, you can choose one, two, or three. But the overall guidance for all of us right now comes in with this first card, which is our focus card, is the Son of Pentacles. So this card is about, it is about the details of our life. It's about staying really focused and really determined, which I think is a good thing. However, we have to be careful. This card always comes in to remind us to lift our head up every once in a while to get the bigger picture. All right, it is good when we are detailed and focused, but this can really help you to really be loyal to yourself, to be determined, to be focused and dedicated. All right, his head is down. He needs to raise it up every time. I mean, time to time, right? It's good to be both. We'll bring in the energy of the moon, be focused with Mother Earth. All right, so how do we do this? And right now, this is good. We don't want our energy wandering too far off as we come around. So if you drew card number one, Ten of Swords. Not our favorite card sometimes. It's kind of scary looking. But the energy of this card reminds us that all that mental chatter, it's done. We don't need it anymore. All right, there's one that goes right through the eyes and the others are in the back. All right, so this does really come in to remind us that let go of that chatter of the mind. It's over. It's done. And as we do that, then we can open up to the bigger picture, right? So maybe this is one of the cards you picked. Notice where the chatter is. How can you shift your mind as you move through this week? All right, it's done. Let it go, all that excess chatter. If you pick card number two, Ace of Cups. All right, this is a funner, this is a more loving card, a funner card. This is a more loving card, a more open card, a new beginning card. All right, this also reminds us that, you know, the Ace is always the beginning of the suit. And through this suit, we do have a lot of energy, of emotional energy, raw feelings, of, of gain, of release, of letting go, of opening up. So this card reminds us to really open up. And we look at the colors in this. It's really pretty. It's got this yellow and orange. It's holding a lot of energy. So it's asking you to notice, too, where are you holding energy for your own self, for the love that you have, right? As we pull into ourselves, that's how we can let others love us as well, all right? Notice your relationships as you move through this week. Notice how you can open up to the heart. And just as we were talking about at the Fearless Fest this weekend, self-care. Bring in that energy for you. It's a good time to really open and work on nurturing and loving that inner child. Really important. And then the third card, if you pick card number three, is the Hanged Man. All right, I always love this card because it reminds us to look at life a little differently. All right, and that's how we can do it as we move through this week. The hangman is the, like the bat hanging upside down, bringing that spiritual energy in. Although the bat doesn't know it hangs upside down, right? But take it time for yourself. Put your feet up the wall as we just did or hang upside down. Look at it from a new perspective and allow the energy of the crown, your guidance, your spiritual knowledge, again, that Pisces energy to come forward for you. All right, so the cards that we're seeing now is be focused, be determined in your energy, but lift your head up from time to time, be grounded in what you do. It's a young energy, sun energy. All right, ten, is the, ten of swords is complete, done. Let that mental chatter be gone. All right, if you're in a fear storm, get rid of it. Let it go. The energy is old and it is complete. All right, yay. Take a breath on that one. The ace of cups, the second card, that's about opening the heart, the self-love, the opening up to that energy of as you open up your heart to love, those will be attracted to open up their heart as well. And then the hanged man is adding in that extra perspective. Look at life from a different viewpoint. All right, mind shift. We were talking about that. Also too, it's like patience. All right, sometimes we want to try too hard, try too hard, and we can get ourselves into anxiety and overwhelm and all those excess emotions. Have a little patience with yourself right now. Good card for me. Have a little patience with what I've been moving through. And maybe it resonates with you as well. All right, so it is some good cards as we move towards the end of the week. It is some good cards to help us as we're moving through this energy as this last phase comes up. So let me know how these resonate with you. I know a couple of people asked me to draw cards for them. I will do that as well. Let's see. Going forward, as I have, as I wait to see who comes forward this week, Reiki Circle at Birmingham Yoga. Please join me, 5.30, Experience Reiki. Restorative Yoga is back on its regular schedule, and that's at 6.30 as well. I'm going to be doing some tarot readings March 9th at Beacon Yoga and teaching in tarot, intuitive tarot with the Wild Unknown. That's coming up in April. So a little bit of a projection of what we've been working on. 
So really, I really want to just really emphasize to let go. Number one, ready to let go of the mental chatter. Good, Jackie. Yay. I really just want to emphasize that I am here for you. I love the work that I do. It has helped me immensely in my life, and I'd like to help you as well. Make the process quicker, right? If you want to schedule an Empower Discovery Session with me, I have some slots open this week. Have a shorter week. I'm going out of town celebrating my sister's birthday. I love the fact that I get a celebration coming up. But jump on the call with me. We can talk about it. We can help you see maybe stuff that you aren't seeing and how you can build that spiritual practice for yourself. And if you're having trouble building a spiritual practice, go to my website and get my free guide. Five steps to helping you set it up. Simple, easy. Because really, it's not that it's that hard. It's just the doing. We've got the knowledge. We've got the information. We talked about this earlier today at the Fearless Fest. Now it's the practice actually putting it into practice. All right. All right. So I have a few people requesting cards. Cindy, Thelma, you asked too. And I know a few others. All right. So Cindy, I'm going to draw one for you. And Thelma, I'm going to draw one for you. We'll start with that. So Cindy, this is interesting. You got the nine of swords. All right. So this is the card that precedes the 10 of swords, which is just kind of a reminder that there's a little bit more of that mental chatter that you could really do with letting it go. So this is a great card to remind you. We don't need to be caught in that chatter and chatter and chatter and chatter. So take a breath, spend a few extra moments in meditation and let this stuff go. All right. It's done. It's finished. Let the release of the moon pull it out of you. Some grounding techniques would be good for you. Some releasing out of the grounding cord. That would really be good for you as well. All right. Thelma, you got the hanged man. You want a card that adds on to that is the mother of wands. All right, so that's that passion and desire, being protective of your energy and those passions that you have. I love all the colors behind this. I love the way she's curled around. So take a break, look at life from a different perspective, and continue to be passionate about what it is you do. Don't give up, all right? Excellent card to follow that as well. All right, I'm going to come over here to Instagram. Let's see who's here that has asked for a card. Finding out where I am here. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. All right. All right. J.M. Russo. I don't know what your first name is, but I will draw a card for you, Jay. All right. Jay, we got the Ten of um, Wands. So this is actually, too, asking you to look at what it is that you can complete. And Wands is about our passions and desires. When one thing ends, another begins. So I would imagine there's some new work coming forward for you. And now it's the time to close that. Maybe do a little ceremony as we finish out through the dark of the moon and come into this next cycle. I actually like to resonate with this card right now myself because this next new moon is a big one to manifest and, and put your dreams out there. So finish up whatever work it is in the passions and desires of your life. All right, Jay, that would be good. All right, Melissa, I'm going to draw a card for you. And then Mayor, thanks a bunch. All right. All right, so Melissa, this card is for you, and it's the Three of Cups. All right, so it was reversed, all right? So generally, this Three of Cups is all about the celebrations of our lives. It's that hard energy, but it's not just about celebrating with anybody, all right? It's really knowing who it is that is important in your life. Now, this was reversed, so what do you need to turn that over? Maybe it's like, who can I celebrate with? Or feeling like you don't know or have people to celebrate with. But really important, offer gratitude. And maybe that means picking up the phone or calling somebody you haven't talked to in a while. But really know that people are there to support you. All right, again, another theme from the Fearless Fest. We are community. We support each other. And that's what this card is about. Really celebrating accomplishments in your life, heart energy in your life, or just life. All right, let me know how that resonates with you. All right, Mayor, this card is for you. Daughter of Wands. All right, Mayor, this is about deciding what your passions and your desires are. And the daughter is some of that innocent energy. All right, snake energy, especially in this deck, is about that fire. What is it that you can bring into existence for you based on your passions and your desires? All right, now one of the ways we do this, especially with the daughter, is we, we do dream big, but we start to take one little step at a time. Passionate steps. It's like that daughter card, that little innocent card. But as you build the passionate steps, you build that greater foundation. All right. I love it. It's wands. It's passions. It's desire. What is that greater purpose for you? You don't have to get there all at once. All right, Mary, do you understand? You can, you need to, I mean, the way to do that is little steps at a time and think of them as passionate steps, one passionate step at a time so that they can have the weight and the importance as you begin to build this. All right. Beautiful card right now as well. All right, Dana, I'm going to draw a card for you. 
All right, we got the Eight of Wands. All right, this is an interesting card because this is quick action. This is quick shift. Wands is our passion and desires. Look how that... Look how that lightning rod comes in, like quick action, and that's in passions and desires. So there is something coming for you as you release the excess energy. You can make a shift change, a swift change for yourself as you move forward. Eight is also abundance and infinite potential. So where can you tap into that for you and bring it forward in the passions? Bring it forward in the fire of your life. All right, that will be very, very helpful. All right, Denise, thank you. All right. It's Denise. Okay, got you, Jackie. All right, Jackie, I'm going to draw a card for you in addition to number one. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to. Thank you. I'll give you some thought. Not feeling up for celebration. Yeah, Melissa, I think that's why it was reversed. All right? But when we bring in gratitude and celebrate, we can lift our energy. So maybe it is like, okay, maybe if not everything is going well, that we offer gratitude for the struggles. That will help us with our lessons. That will help bring it to light. And maybe you can find one or two people, make that threesome energy for you that can help you open up and celebrate, at least with gratitude, all right? It doesn't have to be a big, huge celebration, but at least honoring that maybe this is a challenging time and that these lessons can help you move forward, all right? I know that this last two months have not been the easiest, but the more I offer gratitude, the more lessons I can learn and come forward. All right, Jackie, I got a thumbs up. All right, Jackie, this is the mother of pentacles, all right? And I love this because pentacles is abundance. We didn't get the swan. That's okay. But this is about really like nurturing energy, nurturing from Mother Earth, being creative in how you put out that energy for your abundance in your life, and knowing that you are supporting others and you're helping others in your work. Your work is of service, and that will bring you that financial work that you're looking for, that financial money. Lots of hearts on that, all right? You are nurturing and caring of others. Bring this forward into the work. Continue to open up. No Mother Earth has your back, all right? I love it. Beautiful card for that Mother of Pentacles energy. I love it. You see the little one sleeping there. The work that you do does help many. You are of service. Law of Attraction, you know that, my friend. All right, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. All right, Jackie, you got a thanks there. All right. All right, anybody else? I'm going to draw a card. Anybody else? I know I had somebody else ask me. I had somebody else ask me. Barbara, I'm going to draw a card for you. You're at the beach somewhere dealing with anger. Babs. All right, the Emperor. So this is going to help you. All right, so as women, we don't deal with anger very well. We're not taught to deal with anger very well. And sometimes the anger has building has built up more and more because of resentment that lies underneath. So I think that maybe for you and this card that comes forward is acknowledging the anger quicker and knowing when it's there so that you can release it quicker, all right? The emperor has a lot of that male energy. It's got the sun energy. It's got that tall tree energy. So standing in it and just like doing the physical aspects of getting the anger out. So for me, I know it's like drumming or or I know Catherine used to always tell us like, go drum, go hit a tennis ball, go hit a ball against the wall or something. But what can you do that's going to help you to release the anger quicker and really approach it head on instead of some of the feminine energy, which we tend to hold it on, resentment comes forward. So really facing that. Hopefully that helps. Let me know. You can always email me about that. All right. All right, yes, thank you, Abraham, in two weeks. Good for you, Jackie. That law of attraction is so important, and your work is really, really good. All right, anybody else going forward before I sign off? I had a little trouble with Facebook tonight, but hopefully it's there. All right, so again, the thing that we want to remember is the release energy. The Pisces energy is very important out there. So yes, don't delay in building your spiritual practice, all right? I'm here for you. Reach out. You don't have to do this alone. I can guide you through those steps, teach you about your intuition, and really about how you process energy. All very important as we move through this Pisces energy that we've come into. All right, enjoy the last few weeks of winter. I may not be here next week. I'm going to be coming back from St. Pete. Maybe I'll do it earlier Sunday on the beach or something. But for now, be true to your spirit. Take some time for you. Really important. Thanks again for joining me. Check out the podcast, Empowered Spirit Show, on my website. Or you can find out all your favorite apps, including Pandora. Have a great week. Pull your energy in. Thanks again for joining me. To your spirit. Namaste. Thank you so much.